Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Depesh. Uh, yeah. So, sh uh, shall we get started? So, in this slide, could you please spot banana for me, please? Anyone? <laughs> in this slide. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, chocolate for him. <laughs> or cookie. Give this man a cookie. <laughs> so exactly, it's in the middle. And it was very easy for us. It was very easy for us to recognize banana. How did we do this? How did we recognize a banana? How could we identify between all those fruits that was a banana? So what we did, we, what we took from the picture there, we took in some inputs like the color, the shape and stuff like that and we processed it instantaneously and recognized it was a banana. Can we teach a machine to do this? Can we uh, teach a machine to uh, recognize banana or any other objects? Can we give a machine the power of cognition? So this is going to be our quest this afternoon on how machine is going to learn, how we can teach a machine how to recognize stuff so let's begin. So, uh, so this is going to be our general flow. So we're going to understand how we were able to recognize the banana. Then we're going to look really deep inside, not so much deep, uh, inside the brain, our brain, dig inside and find how it works. Then we take that and apply it to machines and, and take a little bit look inside how that works and then how we can apply it for ourselves. So this is going to be our topics or what we're going to do this afternoon. So uh, also, you also got banana in your chairs. So we all like, uh, so how did that happen? We, uh, we had curiosities. We had different kinds of uh, emotions, why there was a banana there. So let's, let's, let's take a little bit deep inside our brain and see how that worked. So, a brain, we have a mesh, we have a, a billions of neurons inside and they are, they, are, they are working together to provide us this information about recognition and cognition and we are best at doing this stuff. Cognition is our human ability and the power we have generated through evolution. So if you look deep inside, we have a neuron. So what actually a neuron is doing, it's very simple in an in a abstract level. It's taking information from the dendrite on the left. You have this uh, kind of branchy thingy there. So it takes information from there and it decides, should I activate or not? So what gives this power of activation? It's the years of training we do that gives the neuron knowledge that it should fire and it should activate. When it fires, it sends the information to the, on the right we have the axon terminals and it sends the information to the other neurons and the other neurons they process. So what's happening is we have a mesh of neurons working together and giving us this power of cognition. So that's how we, we got to know and we understood that it was a banana and we taken the info inputs of color, shape and uh, in, in this case we even took in the depths of the banana, the smell. So we recognize immediately that it's a banana and it's a delicious food. And if somebody has already eaten it, and it's recommended by the brain itself, like let's eat it, maybe we'll eat it afterwards. So let's apply this principle inside the machine. So we replicate this neuron in a machine on the right. So on the right, on the red, we have this neuron. That's the machine neuron. So similarly, as a brain, we take in the inputs as the axis on the left of that neuron over there. And then the neuron, the uh, red one, it decides if it should activate or not. So when it activates, similarly, it gives the information to the other neurons and work together to find uh, patterns and recognitions. And one of this, uh, this uh, uh, is a state-of-the-art uh, technology right now and most of you have heard of it maybe neural networks and we have like a lot of terms in this so neural network actually it's a neuron what I explained before and 
and uh, it processes that in we, we combine them together in a huge networks and then we feed in the information and we train it and once we train it enough we get like a, a, a recognition output that what the object is or what kind of patterns we are looking for etc so neural network is very old old technology actually it might surprise you it goes back to 50s even the model was proposed in, uh, pro uh, in 40s but it did not come into action until now what happened what happened between then and now well we had the computation power increased so before we didn't have enough computation power to do this kind of stuff now we everything is getting memory is getting cheaper and computation power is getting exponentially very uh, fast so now we are able to do a lot of stuff that we were not able to do long time ago so machine learning and artificial intelligence is in fact getting very realistic and we can see already like face recognition like uh, fingerprint recognition and stuff like that so now it's it's very feasible and very possible to do this kind of stuff Uh, let's take a deep inside how this uh, neural network is doing and all of you have heard of this regression model so that's why it goes back really old because it's in simplest term it's just a regression if you look at the data like what the inputs we took for banana we had all this uh, shape we had the colors and stuff we can plot it in kind of like a graph so apple is going to have a different kind of distribution of data Orange is going to have a distribution data. So what it's actually trying to do is trying to make a decision boundary, like trying to create a relationship between these variables and create a relationship between them and make like a decision boundary. So once we've trained to make this decision boundary, what it actually does is just simply telling it's yes or no. So this is what it's actually doing inside. So it's basically it's a, a statistical model applied uh, algorithm in in neural network well not all data can be fit into like a straight line so we have different kinds of algorithms and neural networks we do some uh, like logistic regression inside or more uh, add more parameters to it to make it more quadratic forms to make like a circle to represent the data inside so as you can see here we can apply depending on the data uh, what kind of uh, de decision uh, boundary we create. So this is what's happening inside the neural networks and giving the power of cognition. So this is uh, what's happening inside. So the main goal is we have the lots of data and we are trying to create a model that fits the data inside and we can classify if it's correct or not. So then gets the question how do we train the neural network well, it's the same as how we train ourselves. We do something randomly, then we get a feedback if it's correct or not. We learn from our failures. So this is what it's, it's doing in this case as well. So we're learning from these failures. So how do we get the feedback in machine? So first we have this uh, inputs, our data, unclassified, unstructured data coming in. And then in the middle we have the layer that's the actual neuron connection of neurons and it gives some kind of output it may not be correct so we don't like uh, then we calculate the error from the output given by a simple uh, root mean square and then we take tiny amount of uh, change from this uh, errors we get and then we apply little amount why, why do we do a little amount let's say my target is over there and if I do a lot of change I might overshoot I might fall down there so we don't want to do this so we, we we need to learn little by little so that's what we're doing also in machines we are training it little by little small amounts so we don't go past our target so this is how we train train the network slowly by slowly and it's a very expensive operation now we have the technology to do this kind of stuff so it's it's pretty cool now we are able to to finally uh, make this algorithm work so how we train uh, inside, how we are training, training the machine, how we're doing is we take some error, right? And in the left, we have this kind of like a, like a ball-shaped graph there. 
So all the errors, if there's an error, if we didn't recognize the banana at first, if it's an apple, then the error would be really high up, like over there in the green dot on the, on the right. So what we're trying to do is go down, downhill to this graph and where the error is very small. So this is what we are actually trying to do is get to very small errors, keep learning, go, go different direction, then get the feedback, then we learn more. So this is what we are doing as a human ourselves as well. We're learning from our feedbacks. Feedbacks are important. So this is what it's doing in, in terms of neural network machine learning as well. So finding direction and moving towards it. So once it's trained, once you've trained our machine, then we just like, then we just give in the information and instantaneously it can identify it's a banana or not. So this is what the actual neural network is all about. So it's a very simple human model represented in terms of machine. So this is about neural network. So what can we do with this uh, machine learning algorithm here? Yeah, well, we can uh, identify trains, demands in the market. We can segment users. We, we can identify different markets. We can have different kinds of price modeling depending on, like, uh, uh, on the feedback we get from the user. So we can keep on making it learning as well. So this kind of, uh, there's other application as well, but this is more in the general e-commerce domain. So we can have more intelligent content. So we can have like a, a UI that's more artificially intelligent that like understands the user. So we're trying to find a way to understand users and apply these principles to, to have like a, a intelligence behind it. Well, not everything is easy for a machine to recognize, <laughs> for example. It's really, really difficult for a machine to differentiate between a chihuahua and a muffin or a sheepdog and a mop. So, so there are limitations to this technology or stuff. Thank you very much.